Hi, this is Piotr Walczyszyn, Adobe Developer Evangelist. Uh, so this is a third episode of a series uh, where we will see how to build uh, PhoneGap applications connected to Salesforce.com. Uh, in previous uh, episodes, you've seen how to, um, first of all, how to create new PhoneGap project, how to clone it from GitHub, sort of a boilerplate uh, structure, so you can uh, quickly uh, get up to speed with it. And uh, this time, uh, I'll also want to show you how, uh, well, how it is all structured and what's the architecture and the whole idea uh, of building uh, PhoneGap applications, but also sort of a module applications using jQuery mobile, uh, Require.js and Backbone. Uh, all right, so uh, let's take a look at, uh, at the co source code that you cloned from GitHub. So if you go to in your uh, into your favorite editor, in my my case it's uh, of course PHP Storm, uh, you can uh, take a look into index iOS file. Uh, so if I open that, uh, you will see that this is a standard HTML file. Uh, so nothing special here. And let's look what we have in the head uh, tag uh, imported. So first of all, there is a jQuery mobile styles imported. Uh, then we have some custom styles and we'll take a look into that further on uh, during the course of this, uh, of this project. And also there is a special style um, which sort of uh, adds iOS specific fix for scrolling. And that's also something we'll see further on, but basically uh, to give you an idea what it is. Uh, it enforces this WebKit transform and translate Z uh, with a zero value actually enforces a hardware acceleration. If you have a, a, a scrollable list, if you want to have a nice and smooth scrolling, uh, this is the way to go with the native scrolling support that is available in WebKit on iOS. Uh, to make it smooth. Uh, basically, this was fixed with iOS 6, but if we still want to support, you know, previous uh, versions of, uh, of iOS platform, then that's something that uh, we'll need. Uh, next is um, uh, a reference to scripts that uh, come with uh, PhoneGap, so Cordova uh, script, JS script. Uh, basically, PhoneGap or Cordova, uh, well, this is at this point uh, almost same thing. Uh, it's specific by platform. Uh, so uh, at this point, it comes uh, with a separate JavaScript file for different platforms, so the API that comes with it. Uh, I know there are plans to change it in the future, but well, that's the way it is right now. So the easiest way if you're building, uh, if you're not using like a service like PhoneGap Build, which automatically replaces it with the proper um, uh, a proper JS uh, file uh, during the build process then so if you want to do it like uh, this then it's the easiest way is to have a few separate index HTML files which just reference different uh, versions for different platforms. Uh, same thing applies to API for the child browser plugin. Uh, also, it's a separate JavaScript file. And the last thing here is a JavaScript file that actually loads require.js. So require.js is a library that implements AMD, so asynchronous module definition, and you can define uh, separately separate modules that are uh, loaded in the runtime of the application and well you will see it further on how it uh, how it works and the last thing here is in the body tag we'll see a, a diff uh, a container that will host actually the content of our application and we don't predefine it uh, up front we will actually uh, inject it dynamically into the dom as the application starts and the user processes uh, or the user uh, goes further in the app all right so let's uh, let's then take a look so we loaded here require js and also we specify a script called main.js and with require you can skip the extension so we just pointed to the path to scripts uh, dash or slash main um, so let's take let's take a look at this main.js file here. Okay, so um, first part of it is a configuration of uh, of require, and it just configures the paths uh, to libraries that we'll be using and assigns sort of aliases to those paths. So when we'll be needing those libraries in other modules, we'll not have to reference those 
uh, through the full path name, we'll just like we want to use backbone, we'll just reference a backbone name. That's it. We will have to specify the full path to it. All right, so that's configuration, and I think we can skip that. Let's take a look at that part that is inside of the require function. So require function is the starting point of the application. Uh, what it does, uh, it has a first parameter. It's an array of dependencies that will be uh, uh, required by uh, the the, the, the code that is specified in the second parameter, which is a, a closure function that has, in this case, two parameters, DOM ready, and DOM ready is uh, declared here in this array. So it will inject DOM ready um, interface here, or the, yeah, uh, well, basically an interface uh, or the implementation. Main, main views, main view, it's a reference or it's a path uh, to actually a backbone view, uh, a definition of a backbone view that will be loaded also dynamically from a separate uh, JavaScript file uh, and will uh, get the reference to that backbone view uh, through that parameter of this uh, closure function. So when all those dependencies in this are loaded, then this function will be called and appropriate parameters will be injected. Well, uh, the, the last one is JQM, jQuery mobile, and this one is not directly um, injected. It, it just needs to be uh, initialized. So also the injection or this the defining in the dependencies, it automatically in, invokes or instantiates that module and JQM will be instantiated. So we will have uh, already uh, ready jQuery mobile for us. Uh, all right, so let's take a look what's inside here. So inside here, we'll be using a DOM ready. DOM ready is a plugin for require, and it's a function that is triggered uh, whenever, well, our application is uh, loaded, fully loaded, the DOM is loaded, and we're ready to start uh, um, working on our DOM. And whatever you specify here in this closure function, it will be triggered when when uh, when DOM ready event is uh, is triggered. So what happens actually here? So this is where actually we're starting the whole application. Uh, first of all, I define a function called on device ready, and it will be called when phone gap is ready. So it's not enough that DOM is ready. Also, the phone gap um, has to be uh, completely initialized uh, and connected with the uh, native interfaces and this function will be called when that happens. Uh, what triggers this function. So let's take a look below here. So first of all here uh, I specify or I detect if I'm running on a device or on desktop. So of course uh, for desktop I'm using that desktop part for debugging but here is the important part. So if you want actually um, so I detect it based on the user agent and uh, signatures that are there. And basically, if I want to target iOS devices, I can specify iPad, iPhone, maybe iPod also, if you want to iPod uh, target iPods. If you want to target Android devices, the user agent will also have an Android string in, inside. So that's the way to go. If you would want to use it for other devices, you could edit uh, after the pipe, other devices like, I don't know, Blackberry, Microsoft, uh, or Windows Phone, and so on. But uh, if that if that's a device, then document event listener uh, is registered, uh, on, uh, the listener on the document is uh, registered, uh, and it's listening for a device ready function, uh, sorry, device ready event. And device ready event is an event that comes with a phone gap. And if that, event is triggered if, of course, it will trigger on device ready function over there. What happens if we're running, if we're running on the desktop? Uh, basically, uh, the thing, first thing I do, I polyfill actually a uh, an API that comes with uh, with PhoneGap. It's an API to uh, to pop up like native uh, alert boxes. Well, I polyfill that with a simple just alert box uh, that comes well that standard uh, web alert box um, and of course i don't have to wait for any uh, like device ready events because uh, browsers don't support that so i can directly call this on device ready function and pass it a parameter true where if I look into my device ready function here, I can see if it says it's a if it's desktop or not. And 
here uh, what I do I detect if it's desktop then I call if it's not actually I uh, close the splash screen so I hide the splash screen uh, so on my application on the on the devices you can uh, configure the phone call application so but that by default they don't hide the splash screen automatically so that it can be uh, it can be controlled by the developer as uh, as I do it here and I can hide the splash screen when I'm sure everything is loaded and I think that's the good point Point. This is good, a uh, good place where uh, to hide the, the splash screen at this point. So that's what I do here. Now the last thing here, what uh, we we'll cover is uh, JQM Navigator. So first of all, the J, uh, jQuery Mobile. It's a nice namespace for jQuery Mobile, of course. And I extended that with a JQM Navigator. So if, if you remember from the first uh, session, I mentioned that JQM Navigator is a plugin for JQ, jQuery Mobile that I created, and it gives us a programmatic access access or programmatic way of pushing views and also having those views defined as backbone views. So what happens here, I use the JQM navigator that is part of the jQuery mobile and I use a function uh, push view and push view accepts a parameter which is a, an instance of a backbone uh, view. And that backbone view has uh, and this type for the backbone view as you probably know already, uh, it was injected through the required JS here. Uh, all right, so now uh, let's take a look quick sneak into main view, what happens there. Uh, so main view is under scripts, of course, views main view JS. And here is how you define modules in uh, requ with require. So it uses this define function, and it similarly to require from the main JS, it also has a parameter with the first parameter, which is an array of dependencies that need to be loaded before my uh, module can be uh, defined. And I specify here I want to use jQuery in my module, I want to use underscore and backbone. And also the last parameter here is a reference to a template file that sits on uh, on the hard drive at this point uh, here uh, in a separate file so it's now nicely decoupled from my uh, from my um, backing sort of uh, view and uh, JavaScript file and what happens here in the second parameter for the define is the closure that defines my module and here I can pass the references that I define in this first array there so what happens here I define a new backbone view so the way to do it is you, you take a backbone uh, namespace you use the view uh, type and you call extend function on it and there you can specify uh, the, the view logic and here is a, in, first of all is like a, initialize is like a constructor function uh, in this case I'm not using it yet but in the next episodes where we'll be doing the all out authentication to Salesforce probably this is the place where I will put it uh, also the render function is the function that uh, renders the view and what happens here I use the dollar el like a jQuery el so it's a uh, it's actually a, a property of my view that is created by backbone and it uh, references a diff element by default it's a diff element that is created by backbone view wrapped of course in a jQuery function so I can directly uh, inject uh, HTML content into it which is loaded from through the main view template which is this one which is this actually file there and also if you uh, may wonder what is text do uh, text exclamation this is a plugin for again plugin for require that uh, allows us to load not JavaScript files but load uh, text files uh, from uh, from specified path and you just have to specify here and then it will load any string uh, from uh, from that file so let's take a look quickly into that file here jQuery mobile uh, header, there we go, and uh, jQuery content. The jQuery page is actually created automatically for you uh, by JQM Navigator when this view is injected. So our div defined by main view will be sort of uh, decorated with pro appropriate data role uh, attributes by JQM Navigator so you don't have to worry and the only thing you worry is the content of it and the content will be uh, well let's uh, let's take a look so if we go to WebKit here let's try to run it I guess it's already running but we can refresh and there we go if you want to like 
debug it. Let's try to open uh, our source code and see main.js. In main.js, let's say I want to put a breakpoint here. So if I now refresh, it will stop the debugger in this place in the push view. I can also switch to main view. Let's turn on that uh, breakpoint. Let's continue. You'll see it continues to render. And when I continue, it uh, nicely renders our view. All right, so I hope that was a quick uh, overview uh, of how the, uh, the application is structured. And in the next episode, we'll start with the OAuth authentication and we'll be uh, implementing uh, the main view uh, logic there. All right, thank you very much and stay tuned uh, for more and bye.